In the past, the Ku Klux Klan had different versions, with the current one emerging after World War II in opposition to the civil rights movements. While the Klan of today is less focused on terroristic costumes, it is still considered a hate group and has been condemned by most Christian denominations. Earlier versions of the Klan held more political and social influence, especially in the South and Appalachia, and many politicians sought their support. These leaders included those who opposed civil rights for newly freed blacks and those who opposed the rising influence of Catholics and Jews in American life. The Klan's message of racial and ethnic purity reflected similar movements in Central Europe during the early 20th century and is echoed in present-day nativist movements. Due to its influence in certain regions, many American leaders had to acknowledge the Klan's existence and some even had affiliations or welcomed their support, although not all claims are confirmed. Nathan Bedford Forrest, a renowned Confederate general, was associated with the Ku Klux Klan, but his involvement was not as extensive as believed. He joined the Klan early on, but there is limited historical evidence supporting his role as the first Grand Wizard Forrest later denied his membership and called for the abolition of the Klan, supporting efforts to eliminate those who terrorized African Americans in the South. Hugo Black, a former U.S. Senator and Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, had a significant impact on U.S. law. Despite being a liberal stalwart, he surprised observers by upholding the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II. Black's association with the Ku Klux Klan was revealed when his resignation letter to the organization was exposed, but he claimed to have resigned prior to becoming a senator. Although he later spoke out against segregation, there is no doubt that he was once an active member of the KKK. Gutson Borglum, the sculptor known for his work on Stone Mountain and Mount Rushmore, had a controversial affiliation with the Ku Klux Klan. He joined the Klan on top of Stone Mountain and his white supremacist beliefs appealed to the sponsors of the monument. Despite being fired from the Stone Mountain project, Borglum remained a Klan member and even received correspondence from high-ranking Klan officers while working on Mount Rushmore. Kaspar Kubli Jr., an Oregon politician and member of the Republican Party, was an enthusiastic supporter of the Ku Klux Klan. He not only accepted a free membership, but also used his popularity and KKK connections to recruit candidates for the state legislature, strengthening his voting bloc. Kubli also advocated for controversial legislation, including the forced sterilization of undesirables and the banning of religious clothing in schools, which remained in effect for decades. Edward L. Jackson, a former attorney and judge, served as the governor of Indiana from 1925 to 1929. He was an active member of the KKK throughout his political career and supported their goals and policies. Although he was charged with attempting to bribe his predecessor while in office, he was acquitted due to a legal technicality. Arthur Bell, a former vaudeville performer and attorney, was the Grand Dragon of the Ku Klux Klan in New Jersey. He held strong anti-Semitic views and criticized the influence of the Roman Catholic Church in American life. Bell published a book comparing the Knights of Columbus to the Klan, arguing that the Klan represented American values. He also played a role in converting former U.S. Army property into recreation areas exclusively for Klan members. Despite his later advocacy for religious tolerance, Bell's influence declined after his dismissal as Grand Dragon. Wyatt Brady, a shoe salesman from Missouri, moved to the Indian Territory and became a prominent figure in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He owned the Brady Hotel and was known for hiring workers without prejudice. 
However, he was also a member of the Ku Klux Klan and was involved in attacks against oil workers who tried to organize. Despite his Klan affiliation, certain areas in Tulsa still bear his name. Although Brady Street was renamed in 2013 due to opposition from groups against his Klan membership. Theodore Bilbo, a twice elected governor of Mississippi and a two-term U.S. Senator, was known for his unapologetic white supremacist views and his affiliation with the Ku Klux Klan. He used the prejudices of his constituents for political gain, spreading rumors about Herbert Hoover's alleged relationship with a black woman during the 1928 presidential election. Bilbo proposed a rider to a New Deal bill that would have deported 12 million black workers to Liberia, and he consistently opposed the idea of black people having the right to vote. He proudly admitted his membership in the Klan and opposed anti-lynching bills, claiming they would lead to increased crime in the South. Robert Byrd, the longest-serving member of the U.S. Senate, faced political embarrassment due to his affiliation with the Ku Klux Klan. He not only joined the Klan, but actively recruited new members to create a chapter in West Virginia. Byrd proudly promoted the Klan and held the title of Exalted Cyclops, corresponding with other Klansmen and expressing his opposition to desegregation. However, as he pursued a political career, Byrd distanced himself from the Klan and later denounced his involvement, claiming that intolerance had no place in America. During Harry S. Truman's early political career, he was approached by a member of the Ku Klux Klan and offered membership in exchange for votes. Truman, needing support, paid the membership dues but later renounced his affiliation when he learned of the Klan's anti-Catholic sentiments. Although Truman's brief involvement with the Klan is often used to label him as a racist, his actions as president, such as desegregating the military, suggest a different perspective. 